Went to work for a natural gas company. Went to work in the pipeline department. And I really enjoyed that work. I enjoyed it because it was almost always outside. There's a wide variety of things to do. One day I could be digging a ditch with a shovel. The next day I could be uh, picking charts at a well. The next day I could be welding. I liked that variety. September 20th, 1991. I left with a senior welder Friday morning. We drove to the first location and finished our welding in that station right at break time, right at 10 o'clock in the morning. We were in taking a break and our company pumper came in. He said he had a well just right outside the location where we were. That well had two drip tanks on it. Both of those tanks had a pinhole leak in a well that went around the fire tube. Could we put that on our schedule to fix sometime? The welder I was working with that day, his name is Tracy. At that point, Tracy had worked with the company for 30 years. Tracy said, we'll just fix it today and not have to worry about putting it on a schedule. The pumper said, okay, I'm going to get hold of my supervisor and let him know what's going on. Because of a conflict between Tracy and that supervisor years earlier, and Tracy hadn't forgot it, he said, no, you don't need to get hold of your supervisor. I'm going to do it today while I'm here, and we'll surprise him. We finished break. There was some other discussion that went on. We drove over to the well just right outside the station where we were, and I got the gas monitor out and checked the atmosphere around where we were going to be welding, and it was, it was safe. And I asked Tracy, what's going to keep a spark from getting inside one of those drip tanks? He said the pumper had told him what the liquid level was. It was several feet high. We're going to be welding 12 to 18 inches off the ground. If he happened to burn through the tank while he was welding, the liquid would snuff the fire out immediately. If he happened to go into the fire tube, it's made to have fire anyway, so we'll be okay. What we didn't do was go to the truck, get our tape out, walk up the catwalk, open the hatch, and gauge the tanks to find out for sure what the liquid level was. We assumed that the information we'd been given was correct. It was not. Because we didn't gauge these tanks ourselves, because we assumed that information was right, even though we were the ones on the job risking our lives, we took information from someone else that was wrong. And any time you do something to save a few minutes, and that's all we had done, we wanted to save just a few minutes because we'd added this job to an already busy day, it is nothing but a shortcut. That's all it ever will be, and that's what we've done. We wanted to save a few minutes by not having to go up the catwalk, so we didn't engage the tanks. There was not going to be any grinding or brushing for me to do as a helper, so I didn't even put my gloves on. I left them in the truck. Even though I was at a work location where anything can happen at any time, I left my gloves in the truck. I rolled the leads out for Tracy to do his welding. He laid down on the ground, started welding on the first tank. Another supervisor pulled up to see what was going on. I went and talked to that supervisor for less than 30 seconds. Tracy finished his weld on the first tank, moved to the second tank. The supervisor went to get his pickup to leave. I started walking back towards Tracy. The two tanks sat side by side. I had walked past the first tank that he had already welded on. And I'd reached a point where I was even with both tanks. I was about uh, 10 feet away from those tanks. I was about 8 feet away from Tracy laying on the ground welding. And I heard a sound in that tank that he was welding on. I knew it was going to explode. And I hollered at Tracy, it's going to blow. And just then it blew. 